All right, here we go. Okay, <clears throat> had a little camera issue there. I want to talk to you today briefly about uh, this game, uh, Bolt Action, the miniatures game. I had a chance to play with it uh, last night with a couple of buddies, and I'll call it a guided experience. I didn't read any rules, didn't look at any tables or any charts or anything like that, and uh, just played the game. And took a few pictures and bits and pieces. I uh, didn't do any video while I was playing, but uh, all in all, you know, I had, had a fun time. And afterwards, we went and had a few beers, and we were talking about uh, how the game mechanics work and why I was reluctant to get more involved with uh, either that or Saga or uh, the Sergeant's miniatures series, sort of pseudo miniatures board game series. And, you know, I've posted some pictures. I'm going to put, hopefully, my little talking head in the corner, and the pictures will uh, pop up as we go along. And the guy who painted the, the minis did you know, quite a good job, and... They all look pretty awesome. And you can see some of the images there of the machine, Vickers machine gun crews and mortars and things like that and the, the British and the Australian forces and then some setup stuff. And so uh, as, um, you know, with most mini minis games, you have a points system to pick your armies. And this was uh, just a real quick six turn uh, meeting engagement where we both had an equivalent amount of points and you kind of, you know, rush to the middle and shoot stuff, right? So there wasn't a lot of opportunity to explore or understand how the, for instance, how tactically, how the four Fs might come, you know, the finding, fixing, flanking and finishing type of thing would come to play in a game like that. And uh, what, I, what I did get a feel for though is the, the actions that you can take, uh, the distances you can move, how terrain affects uh, both movement and fire, and then the, how the fire mechanics work and how artillery works. Uh, we didn't use any smoke or other special rules or vehicles or anything like that. It was just uh, uh, each side, I think each side had three 10 man teams. So I would call that either, you know, a reinforced squad or, or, or two four man fire teams or whatever the case may be kind of clumped together and so I was running the Aussies and I had uh, 10, uh, 10 troops, a leader, two vicars, guns and uh, th which are three man teams and that broke into three fire groups uh, the, the two machine gun groups uh, were one each and then the fire group of 11 guys or 10 guys whatever it ended up being 10 guys plus a leader I think and the interesting thing about this game is when you shoot, it's not like a lot of the other minis games where I roll a bunch of dice and then you counter back with a bunch of dice. So there's a lot less die rolling. Uh, so you roll a hit and however many, you know, threes, four, fives, or sixes, or four, fives, and sixes, or fives and sixes you get based on the terrain and the range and all the rest of it is how many hits you get. And then you roll to see how many dudes you kill. Uh, and so you grab your dice again and roll again. So you're still doing the two rolls, just the one guy does both rolls. Um, and then there's this uh, selection process of who gets killed. And we made a mistake when we were playing uh, early in the game. But uh, basically what happens is when you roll a six on the kills, uh, then you have a chance to roll again. And if you roll a six again, then you get to select the individual that dies, so the leader or the sniper or the machine gunner or whatever the case may be. So the very first couple of turns, you know, we saw, uh, you know, a significant number of, uh, you know, leaders and things get knocked off because we're cherry picking guys because we played the rule wrong. But anyway, that aside, uh, this is not something that I would play again based on that type of scenario. But I could certainly see where if you had a series of scenarios or a campaign or some sort of different situation with reinforcements coming in in different areas or an ambush or some hidden movement or something like that, uh, it could be a lot of fun. Um, the thing that struck, I struggle with with minis is that you, you talk to the guys, it was actually one of the sales guys or the reps for uh, the bolt action system. <clears throat> was there, he was asking us what we think about it and, you know, we got to buy some and all sorts of stuff. And I was like, man, not so much. Uh, when we started talking about some of these rules and that's where we found out we made a mistake with the rule. Uh, but 
then he plays part of it completely differently. And oh, by the way, there's a secondary rule book coming out that's an update and a refresh and fixes all these things that are wrong. And that's like, man, you know, you've got to go spend all this money, paint all these minis, do all this work, and then you've got to go buy another book to get it right, to play it right, or to play the way it's supposed to be played, or the way they th thought it should be played, because version one was kind of wrong. That kind of frustrates me a little bit. And the same thing with Arata for a board game, but you know, you can, Arata for a board game, you can download it. Here, you're, it looks like you're version two. You're, you're rolling out 20 bucks or 40 bucks or 60 bucks for a rule book. Beautiful books, really, really well done. Lots of pictures and good stuff, but it's kind of disappointing with that. So, um, the gameplay itself, though, was a lot of fun. Uh, I found a little bit of disparity in, you know, heavy machine gun should be nailing a bunch more guys. I felt than ten or eleven guys shooting single shot uh, rifles uh, at a at a squad running across the open. Um, so I. I Certainly good light fun, but I felt like there was a few things missing. I didn't see any opportunities for, you know, using any real tactical choices. Uh, I set my fire team, my, my squad in the middle and two figures, one on each side. Uh, you know, you don't get crossfire benefits. You don't get any, uh, you get a few uh, cover benefits. But you don't get any uh, massive firepower benefits. So. For instance, uh, no no ability to chain a, a set of activations together. Each guy's going to fire in sequence as you pull the die out based on the color of the die. So Japanese guys were the gray dice and we were the blue dice. Well, I might get three activations and he might get none. And I may get to put those three fire teams together and have them all shoot. Or I may not. I don't know. I, I, so a lot of these games seem to lack a command and control mechanism, which is a level of realism that can be created in some ways. And they do part of that here with these pin markers you put down behind your squad. Each pin marker subtracts one from your morale, which makes it harder for you to activate the next turn. So uh, anyway, uh, I found the uh, it to be a fun game, but I'm just wondering where it goes from from there and what we what we do with it as a as a group of guys, right? Um, not sure I have much more to say than that. Huh. So interesting, fun. Uh, I could see the potential for more. I guess my point about all this is that when I first started playing with minis when I was twelve or thirteen years old, I painted up my little Napoleonic guys at whatever scale it was with whatever set of rules it was. I don't remember now. I was so excited about the, you know, the cannonades and the cavalry charges and forming squares and doing all those Napoleonic things and experiencing the theme. And I just don't see, uh, I don't see any of that coming out in a game like this or like uh, in Saga. It's just two guys with meat cleavers whacking at each other and whoever gets the best dice wins or whoever has the best board with special effects wins. And it, it didn't give me any, uh, and maybe I'm looking at it the wrong way, but it didn't give me any of the flavor and feel of the, the era that we're playing. And in this particular instance with World War II, it's, um, you know, it's, it's hard because you've got, uh, you've got such long range weapons that you would, it's you need to use cover you need to use smoke you need to use flanking you need to pin people down which we certainly did do in this game there's some shots here where you'll see uh you know the dead pile but you'll also see uh you know the little red markers behind them that's pin markers and that makes it increasingly difficult for the japanese or the australians or the british to do something um but it doesn't it, it's still that was I think perhaps too much of an abstraction. So, you know, this is a long video about a little game that I played for an hour and a half, uh, two hours, and I uh, had a lot of fun with it. Uh, but it, I, I need it to be more substantive uh, of an experience to make the dollar investment and the time investment, particularly for the painting, uh, or the more or the additional dollars to have someone paint them for me. So, uh, 
I think uh, it's a game that I, I like, but it's not a game that I got uh, uh, so enthused about after one play that uh, I'm going to rush out and spend three, four hundred bucks on uh, all the gear, or, or two hundred bucks on all the gear, whatever it may be. So we'll see. Uh, hopefully we'll get to play it a couple more times and we'll get a, a feel for the, uh, the more of the advanced rules that are available and the different situations you can get into in scenarios and we'll kind of take it from there. Alright guys, uh, I'll uh, catch up with you. I've got a couple other videos I'm going to uh, be talking about, a couple other topics I'm going to talk about in the next uh, little bit, so I'll talk to you soon.